So if we look at all of mining, uh, uh, manufacturing, uh, uh, forest products, um, including logging, uh, and, and uh, uh, direct uh, federal employment as the economic base, uh, the Western UP lost uh, 4,600 jobs between the uh, early 1970s uh, and, and 2009. Um, the, the traditional economic base clearly uh, suffered substantially. Now, according to the most uh, widely held, I call public economics, usually I call it folk economics, but the organization here is folk. So I, I, it would sound like I'm blaming them for it. So uh, the most widely held popular view of what makes the local economy tick is those export-oriented activities. I mean, the general idea is that if you, if you don't export something and bring money in, then there, can, there can't be any local economy. Uh, uh, if you don't have money coming in, the idea is we'd have to stick with bartering. Uh, uh, you would, each household would have to specialize in something and they would trade with somebody else. Uh, and the region would have to be largely self-sufficient. So we'd back to, be back to some sort of subsistence uh, 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 economy uh, cut off from the national and world economy. Now that may sound good to survivalists or hippies going back to the land, uh, but that's not what most people have in mind in terms of a prosperous, uh, reliable economy. Uh, so the argument is you have to export stuff you have know, to specialize and export stuff like copper or like wood products or like agricultural products uh, so that income will flow in and then you'll have money to spend in local businesses and money to spend on importing goods and services that you can't easily make locally. So the idea is that all economic activities are not equal. Some are far more important than others, not because they're larger, but because of the particular role they play in the economy, bringing money in and enabling local economic activity to take place. So according to that theory, if, you're, if the export base, if the industries that are exporting goods and bringing money in go into decline, as they did after the early 1970s in the Upper Peninsula, the economy should go into a tailspin. Now, the economy in the the overall economy in the western upper peninsula uh, did uh, uh, go through a pause in growth uh, during that the steepest part of that loss of mining jobs and uh, wood products jobs, uh, manufacturing jobs. Uh, there was a slowdown in the growth, but while we were the export oriented businesses were losing 4,600 jobs. The rest of the economy, the more locally oriented economy, added over 12,000 jobs. Not only did it not decline, it rose and rose substantially. Uh, it increased by the jobs in the locally oriented sectors, the non-export sectors, rose by 70%, while the export base was losing 55% of its jobs. So, the rest of the economy was headed in some other direction than the export base. I should ask, did you want questions during it? Or oh, not? I don't care. Right. <laughs> Except you know, maybe that's not a good idea because you know how long my answers are. So. <laughs> well, some people know how long my questions are. Oh, well, <laughs> let, 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 well, that's a very simple one. Okay. Do you think there's a connection in the increase in other jobs the decrease in mining jobs. Do you think there's any positive effect there? Uh, th there certainly is. People, when when people lose their jobs and they're connected to a place, uh, they do their damnedest to create jobs. Uh, and there's there's a role that export-oriented businesses like mining, which, uh, as I, uh, I think it was Scott that did, I was calling it uh, the fairy godmother approach to economic development where, you know, some parachute, a, a fully formed automobile assembly plant flared parachutes uh, just outside the door here in the field. Uh, and, you know, it hires 
2,000 workers. Uh, and that's what, that's what uh, economic development is all about. You know, that's a very dependent, sort of savior-oriented, uh, some outsider has to come in and give us jobs. Uh, it's the opposite of an entrepreneurial economy. And so one of, one of the characteristics of mining-dependent communities, like lumber-mill-dependent communities, or even agriculturally-dependent communities, is that it, it tends to render people uh, uh, more passive economically uh, than they might otherwise uh, would be. So I think it did put, you know, people either had to leave uh, or they had to engage their entrepreneurial skills uh, to find other uh, productive activity or start other productive activity or join in uh, in other productive activity. So that, that was part of it, but the economy was also changing. What, what the national economy uh, produced, what people valued, what people were spending their incomes on, shifted from uh, heavy manufacturing, uh, the outputs of steel mills, uh, 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 to uh, what came to be labeled a service economy. And one, you know, one could say, oh, that's you know, people working at Burger King or something like that. Well, uh, it's not. It includes hospitals and health care. Uh, 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 computer programmers, uh, uh, technologically oriented folks in a variety of, of businesses. It includes construction activity. Uh, it includes a, a, a broad range of some high paying jobs and some low paying jobs. Uh, but that was true at the, the tail end of the export oriented uh, logging and wood products wasn't always a high paying job. Uh, uh, and some manufacturing jobs and minimum wage jobs. So 